Welcome to Provence. This beautiful medieval town can be found around an hour's drive from Paris or an hour and a half if you choose to come here by public transportation. It makes for a great escape from the hustle and bustle of the city because all of it is so beautifully preserved that it feels akin to stepping back in time. Provence is actually UNESCO World Heritage listed because it grew to particular prominence during the 11th century. At this time, it was home to around 30 to 40,000 people, making it one of the most populated cities in Europe at the time, which is obviously hard to believe when you visit today, and there's only a thousand people who live here. During this time, this is where the Champagne Fairs were held. This is when thousands of people, well, merchants from all over Europe, would come here to sell their wares. These fairs took place three to four times a year and took place over six to eight weeks. Most of the time, things like champagne and wine were sold, but also cheeses, other produce, other products such as furniture. And this really led to Provence becoming the heart of medieval France. Provence was important throughout the entirety of the Middle Ages, and by the 9th century, it had even minted its own coin. The Champagne Fairs themselves were held between 1120 and 1320. I can only imagine how those merchants felt many centuries ago when they initially spied the grand buildings of Provence looming ahead in the distance. For a taste of the past, then it's worth noting that the town hosts an annual medieval fair at the beginning of the summer, where you can experience what life would have been like many centuries ago. There are two main reasons why Provence has maintained all of its medieval architecture. The first of these is that the inhabitants of Provence have kind of gone down over time and so it's not been needed to construct more buildings. And the second reason is due to its elevated position on a hill above the rest of the countryside around it. And that is also thanks to this tower, which we're going to visit now. Tour César dates all the way back to the 12th century and in its past it was used as a watchtower, a keep and a prison. In some times in history, the prisoners were kept in near total darkness. Since the 17th century, this tower has actually served as the bell and clock tower for the church just behind me. We're now going to go to the top of the 17th century added roof. Come and look, it's very narrow in here. It's literally the same width as me. All of this part was added when this tower was transformed into the clock tower for the church. And you can now see all of the bells, although there is a very large sign there saying, please don't ring the bells. I think there have been some pigeons on these bells, however. This is the main square in town and it's from here at the top of the hill from which much of the rest of Provence is organised. There's lots of little cafes and restaurants here where you can sit on the square in the summer and enjoy people going by, enjoy some local specialties including rose flavoured things because roses are what Provence is most famous for. This tithe barn dates all the way back to the 12th century when it was rented out from the collegiate church to various merchants who were coming to town to store their goods. From the 15th century onwards, it was used to store tithe, which is a kind of tax that the church imposes on the residents of a town. Today, it's an amazing museum where you can learn more about the history of the medieval fairs here in Provence.
Provins is quite small and so the best way to get around is on your own two feet. But if you want to learn more about the history of the town, then you can also take the tourist train. The medieval ramparts are really well preserved. They stretch up to 25 meters in height and were constructed between the 11th and 13th centuries. Once upon a time, they stretched a whole five kilometers and would have encircled the entirety of the medieval town. Today, you can walk along them for free. One of the more unique things to do in Provence is to head underground. There are actually two sets of tunnels underneath the town. The first set was used in medieval times, most likely to store food. The second set, well, they're even older still. Estimates suggest that the second and deeper set of tunnels in Provence were in use as far back as the Bronze and Iron Ages, and graffiti from both of these eras have been found in the tunnels. Today, you can only visit the tunnels via a guided tour. Most tours take place in French, but there's one tour per day in English. The temperature stays the same year round, never rising above a cool 12 degrees, so do be sure to bring a jacket along. Graffiti can be found in every available small space and crevice, making the entire experience akin to stepping back in time. As well as all of the medieval architecture, Provence is probably most famous for its rose, which is this one. And if you want to learn more about the history of roses, as well as see over 450 varieties, you can head to the Rose Garden of Provence. Because we're in a rose garden, we've gone for one of the more popular things on the menu, and that is rose syrup with a traditional lemonade. So let's try it and see how it is. That's really strong, but very good. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe for more France content. See you next time.